<clears throat> what is up guys, Dan of course, welcome back to another TBU week 7 battle against Slyro and the Pittsburgh Pyro. Now, I never battled Sly before, I really want to have that said before even going in. I'm looking forward to battling Sly for quite some time, but we haven't faced each other. We actually shared leagues, yet never faced each other. and We haven't necessarily gone out of our way to battle each other on a no tier-based level either, though... With that said, I have a high respect for him. I think he's a very, very com competent battler um, and are a big fan of what he does. He's definitely one of those battlers that I feel are very meta-heavy and can be really, really strange and out of his ways, really, and just pinpoint situations on an opponent which he can just lock himself into and sweep from, which is a very, very rare case. It's a very strong thing he has. And his team is pretty much what I consider that would be ideal towards my way. And of course, would elect a bus called Fable, Land Rovers, Lucario, uh, Pelis, and Drogoli. Now, Drogoli is my main issue towards this battle. My team is as follows a Scarf God War modest version, just able to outspeed Electa Bus. Outside of that, it's on the bulky side. Um, Mega Blastoise, a bit of speed investment, mainly to actually be focusing on not being crept by the likes of Fable. Uh, and as you know, the usual stuff here with the boat Scald, Earthquake, Ice Beam, I believe, and Flash Cannon. So, a bit of a weirder set this time around, but mainly the Earthquake is for Dragolgi. If it is around 40%, uh, I should be able to get it from that range. Uh, Roselia is uh, the one I benched, or benched off the bench from actually giving up Yelicent. Uh, Roselia here has Giga Rain, uh, Sludge Bomb, Toxic Spikes, and Zenthesis. Its main issue, or it, its main role here is to kind of pivot, or not pivot, that's the wrong word, but not being locked down by, of course, Electavar or um, Palisand or Dragology or Clefable. It actually walls those Pokemon fairly well. Now, Lucario and Landers will be able to do a significant amount of damage. It's a build get carry, of course, the likes of Psychic. So, I know I can take those um, ones and Rusial with some damage. Now, Lucario clearly walls this set really well, and I need to watch out for it. And uh, then we have, of course, Excadrill, a scoffed version of Excadrill this time around. Um, and nothing to it. It is able to outspeed the Electa Bus with Scoff, uh, Adamant, a bit of the bulkier side, and uh, it has Self Rocks for some reason. I kind of felt that it could be probably necessary for this battle, depending on what it brings. Uh, it doesn't seem to be overly important for this matchup, though. Uh, but mainly, Earthquake spamming is something that does really well here once I get Palisand and, of course, that pesky Lander side away. Uh, Psyguard, Adamant, Scoffed, yes, another Scoff, pre Scoff at his Wi Fi Bell. And uh, the Psyguard here is, its main role is Spam Thousand Arrows. I kind of realized that one who are building the game would be like the guy that is kind of a co coach here, Ricky Sprite, that we are very, very capable of just spamming this. Clefable is the only mod that really does so as well, and of course, Palisand. But uh, there's just this environment of just spamming Thousand Arrows and not have a switch in. Yeah, that's going to be rough for my opponents. Therefore, we're gonna do it. And Frostlass is the usual stuff here with a uh, Shadow uh, Reduce or a Ghost Reducing Berry with Will Wisp, Spikes, Shadow Ball, and Ice Beam. Uh, those stabs does super effective damage against all of his team or does it at least neutral to, of course, Lucario and uh, Very, very, very good set in general. And the speeds here is enough to speed creep, of course, a regular uh, Timid or Jolly Electivire uh, or like a bus. Huh. Anyway. My main initial thought here was that uh, Gardevoir is going to be my win con depending on his sets. Gardevoir is able to, of course, snag adaptability or share force from Landers. So depending on his Pokemon sets, I should be able to, with Gardevoir, uh, force him for heavy, heavy damage. Uh, with that said, though, the things I'm kind of uneasy with here is that I know that he really, really are good at switching in and out. He's not weak to any kind of hazards, and of course, even if I have Toxic Spice, it's mainly here for Clefable and the Palisand, and of course, Dragolu can easily come in and out versus my Rosalia. That's a big issue towards me. Uh, should also be said, going into this game, I wasn't feeling the best, uh, since, of course, the Hacks loss versus, of course, uh, Ethan... Uh, last week with a 5-0 loss uh, and the crazy hacks that was involved with that. I'm, I didn't feel <laughs> tough in my game. I, I was not interested in having this battle um, as competitive as possible. And it's not um, it's not a way to say that I wasn't invested in the game. I, tr I truly did want to win, but I definitely felt a little less inspired here. Even though the team is on point, 
uh, I'm still playing a game here of uh, can I use my defensive Pokemon offensively? And uh, yeah, it's it's clearly it's up for debate. Goblin Games, of course, Sly, I have no idea how easily he could pull me apart. I mean, a Rock Polish Jet with Landris or um, a Guillotine Lucario are extremely dangerous towards my team and eventually could actually deal with me really well. And I don't found a way to actually tackle any of those sets properly. Um, I actually ignored it, hoping he didn't want to bring it. So uh, with that said, me being dumb and all, let's see how this game turned out. Should be said also, I've sped this up this game a little bit, mainly because there are situations here which are just complete lockdowns. Uh, so I'm gonna leave with Guard War, I'm just gonna scout the damage, I'm gonna trace the static, I wanna find out whether it's a Violite or if it is Scarfed, and it's definitely not Scarfed as Moonblast will secure that this is definitely Violite since I don't even do 50%. Knowing that and the Thunderbolt Retaliation, I'm not going to risk any other Thunderbolts because we know what happens if we stay into those. So I'm just gonna go into Jorgmandar, which is of course the Psy God. And we're gonna go for a thousand arrows and basically I know I'm baiting in of course the Clefable, but at least then I can scout how defensive Clefable is for this matchup, which is clearly it has to be defensive towards me. Uh, there's no reason having Coil Dragon as said because I was unaware. And we do those 25%, which definitely indicated this is a defensive set. Uh, what makes this worse is that somewhere down the line I can't seem to take a Moonblast. Even though I have a lot of HP, I'm just wasting my time with softball in mind. So I'm just gonna send in Rosilia as he goes for Wish. And I felt this was definitely okay. Um, I felt that it's very likely that here comes a Dragology or a Lucario. Either way is fine. As I felt that, you know, if it's switching to Dragology, I get my Toxic Spikes up and uh, they are there to stay till they switch in and out. And uh, it goes with Dragology, which is great. Uh, but it should say for this situation, while Roselia just doesn't take a lot of damage towards Dragology, I myself do not take it, take these any well either. Uh, he, I, I can't necessarily hurt him at all, actually. Uh, the reason I went for Synthesis here well was I want to scout whether or not it was a speed reverse and then going for Draco so I can actually Synthesis that off. Uh, it is a, a bulkier set and the damage output there really shows me that this is an Assault Vest version. This means one thing and this is actually really, really annoying towards me. Um, since it is so bulky with Assault Vest, Guard War will not be able to actually even KO it from 50% with adaptability in mind. Or it could, can do it, but it's highly unlikely. So it does stay in against Landers here, I just want the damage, so I know I will survive, unless it was a C-move fly, which basically what I was scouting up. And the earring shows me that at least it isn't that of, uh, defensive, which is great. Um, so predicting the Earth Power here, I'm just going to go to my Jurgmandar, and I'm going to go for an Outrage here. Psyguard is not that important to this matchup, though it is very, very well rounded towards this game. I can definitely, i rather trade my Psyguard towards actually getting rid of the Landorus since I am Scarf. So I go for Outrage, and he does live with a slither of health, and that was like, oh dear god, no. Mainly because I this, I wanted to pay the Clefable to come in and kill me, but this turns out to be a little bit worse. While I could trace now, the, of course, Chef was in my Moonblast get a 30% boost, it still really, really, really sucks. Uh, because I could definitely private better around that with, of course, my Psyguard in mind. But we lost him, it's alright. Aquaria comes in, that's less alright since it takes away, of course, my Toxic Spikes. I need to switch out, I can't take a Sludge Wave. I really, really can't take a Sludge Wave. Feeling that's gonna go down, I'm throwing in, of course, my Excadrill as he goes for a Scold. And I was like, dude, no, damn it. And boom, there's the burn, because, you know... If we do a bad play, we're at least gonna get heavily, heavily punished. <laughs> I was like face palming. I was like, "What do I do now? My second scarfer is burned. This is this is just as bad as my previous match. I'm just gonna go for a, a scarf to stealth rocks because this is where I realized that right, Guard War just turned out to be my number one win con now because there is no way Excadrill is gonna wrap up the game with, of course, being um, burned. So knowing that, I'm just gonna switch in Leia here, and the thing is here. There is no way Palisand can stop me, there is simply no way, sure he gets the defense drop here and it's unfortunate, definitely, but Giga Rain could easily do 70% on him and I'm actually gonna go just for saves and seizes, feeling that it's very, very, very unlikely that he would stay and go for another, since of course Giga Rain will annihilate him. So we get up our HP, we need to get up our HP because other than that we can't stop Dragology because we need Dragology down a lot. 
Uh, so I'm just going to switch in Rodot, feeling that he's either going to be a Psychic here coming on, or a physical Iron Head, or I mean uh, Bullet Punch or like that. Uh, he shows me, of course, Psychic, and that he is specially offensive. So being dumb as a rock, I actually go directly for an Aura Sphere here. That was probably really, really dumb. It was highly unlikely that he would stay in, and even at that, Earthquake would have done a decent amount of damage. So thinking about it, yeah, that was that was dumb. Uh, <laughs> so of course we get the Aura Sphere up. It's not going to do anything to Dragology, it, it is mainly because it is on Dragology. Now, here's the thing, I really didn't want to risk this at all, I wanted to force it down, I didn't want to lose my um, Gardevoir just yet, or you know, switch it in and anything like that, because I was fearing, and I really, really was fearing that Lucario would have been a mix set with both Vacuum Wave and Bullet Punch, knowing that it could have been very likely for him to kill me. So, uh, with that in mind, we have a bit of a stall out here, where I basically scouted that Sludge Wave. I really, really wanted him to go for Sludge Wave. It doesn't transpire. I set up Toxic Spike on, in his face, uh, mainly here, because I do want to eventually force a switch somehow, as I just keep going for the synthesis. I really, really mean this when I say this. I had no idea how to tackle this drug all He keeps on Dragon Pulses, and this really, really scared me so much, because... Not seeing any other move made this thing so hard to switch in and out on. So predicting another Dragon Pulse, I'm just gonna switch in, of course, in my Kaiser. Basically because I was looking for that, of course, like I stated, Sludge Wave. I felt this was an easy switch in, as um, I just really want to bait him to keep attacking me and me go for an Earthquake. Uh, but I get an, a bit of a decent exchange here, because he does go for that defensive play and go of course to his Palo Sand, which of course now is poisoned and we can actually start whittling down really 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 fast and we want a really 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 fast whittling down here so um, the burn is gonna go, the lift is gonna go, you know, all that jazz, you know, mm mm mm, beautiful, perfect, awesome, we want this as I can easily go to Resilia yet again and Resilia can do what Resilia does best, which is at this point just nothing <laughs> It's one of those really weird cases where I'm I'm trying to define what I really think about my defensive plays here because had he had some kind of setup here, he could very well whittle me down. Now, I go directly for actually Giga Drain here, um, as of course we don't do anything. It definitely, I do really get 2 HP back. We get 1. That means we did 2 or 3 damage here. So I'm just going to go for Synthesis. Um, as stated here, we are still no range where God of War with even the that ability can KO this Pokemon, and this is really, really, really annoying. So I'm just gonna go for Sludge Bomb here, and we get actually just above or just around 50%. So we have a decent chance now where you know, we finally has to roll. And seeing that now I am in a range where actually I would synthesis usually, I feel like he's gonna keep going for Dragon Pulse. Let's take this opportunity, let's bring in God of War. As it goes for Dragon Pulse, and we now have Moonblast Adaptability. That should be well more than enough to actually try to wrap up this game. And I say that not necessarily knowing whether or not his Lucario has, of course, a Bullet Punch. But here is the thing: he actually switches in the Electavar or Electabus, which, due to the self rocks, will not be able to, of course, survive this. But that tells me one thing, and really one thing only. He doesn't have Bullet Punch on his Lucario, there is no way, because he would have switched that in if that were the case. So now I'm starting to feel really, really safe, and I'm just gonna blast away. Like, there is nothing stopping this train, God of War just got this. And, um, I will be honest and say here, because even after Stealth Rocks here, the Drogol, you will survive the Moonblast. Which just perplexes me, what makes this even worse is that he doesn't have the sludge wave, he never had it. I was waiting for something he didn't have, and that just perplexed me so much because I was really, really like baiting him, go for the sludge wave, show me that you got it so I can't switch in my guard war whenever I want. But instead we come to a situation where guard war basically gets all the six kills this battle. He took out the Landorus, or she took out the Landorus, she took out of course the rest of the five that were left and this game was basically about which of us defensive Pokemon would eventually fall. And in the long run, my Rosalia was most certainly gonna fall. It was whether or not I could find an opening before that actually happened. And clearly it did. Now, for what is worth here, I really, really want to say this. That due to this victory of 5-0, 
we are doing actually okay now. We actually have a chance. We recovered as much as we was destroyed last time. So that's a good thing. Um, though I really, really need to actually just take my heart out here to, of course, Sly when it comes to this battle alone. Um, I think I threw him off with my Scarfers, or with Sigarbian Scarf against Landers. I definitely believe I did that, because he lost a lot of health to a Pokemon that could very, very well annihilate my whole team. So that was definitely rough for him. Outside of that, I definitely think that due to lacking Sludge Wheel's Dragaldi, that he was in a tougher position than um, he actually initially thought. I think he felt that he could deal with my guard were really well and he probably would had I not been speedier or you know scarfed uh, and that meant a lot when it comes to initial pivot and of course actually damage output. Uh, Lucario lacking bullet punch um, for uh, actually it was actually agility set which was something I was fearing going into this game uh, but not I was more scared of you know, the mixed set with vacuum wave and bullet punch mainly because it would have done so much damage to us my whole team rather easily but then again, it would be Wallace against, of course, certain Pokemon, but not a lot, really. Uh, only Pink Blaster has been one kind of wall it effectively. So, I think that was a rough for him, a rough decision for, um, from his side, because everything else really makes sense. I really like the Clefable Wishing here. Uh, it could definitely work around really, really well, since, of course, it just kind of keeps his stamina of his Pokemon really high. Electabuzz, one of those Pokemon that are so heavily defensively, it could easily take an EQ from Excadrill, which is just incredible the more I think about it. So, yeah, what I want to say is there, I, I, I win the match for, I do believe, the wrong reasons. Uh, be because I know Sly is a very, very, like I said, competent player. And I think he just overlooked Gardevoir's damage output. And he was definitely not fearing how annoying Roselia could be towards his team. And I think he tried to realize how he should put that thing down before even dealing with Gardevoir. And um, I myself, of course, had the same issue towards, of course, Dragology, where I realized that I don't necessarily have anything that could take it head on, with, of course, it being Assault Vest. And that thing got scary really fast, and uh, it just kept on coming. I, I had no idea how to stop it, so I'm really glad the game ends up the way it does, because I do believe none of us had anything for our special defensive Pokemon, and it shows it became a pretty tough or slow game due to it where we just basically scratches our head. Um, but yeah, with that said guys, thank you of course so much for watching. Make sure to check out Sly's side of this battle. And I'll see you guys for of course our last week in the Battle Union, where we either make it or break it. Well, I guess the Rissy Pow and the Phoenix on Floras. So we have, we have things to do a lot. So anyway guys, of course, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Until then, of course, take care.